chapter two, a brief history of police in the United States. Uh, the learning objectives for this chapter are as follows. Uh, the chapter examines the influence of England or English police or the English roots of policing, if you will, on the American police. Okay. It describes the influence of technology. Uh, on the evolution of early U.S. policing. The chapter summarizes some of the issues facing policing during the political era. It explains the effect of changes implemented during the reform era on policing in general. The chapter describes the relationship that exists uh, between social upheaval in the 1960s and the 1970s. It also examines the increased emphasis on research on police effectiveness. Now, the chapter also examines or at least identifies certain aspects of uh, policing models. For example, it examines the uh, community policing model. It explains the problem-oriented model. The chapter evaluates at least three contemporary policing strategies in terms of their effectiveness. Chapter summary. Police organization. Uh, the police in the United States has its roots in the English traditions. Uh, what that means is that the early days of policing in the United States could be traced all the way back to the early 1900s in England. So the way organized and professional police agencies operate today has been influenced greatly by their historical development from English origins over the last 200 years. So the type of police we have today is based on a replica of the type of policing that existed in England in the early 1900s. Training in the early days of policing. In the early days of policing, there was almost no training to be a police officer. There was little to no formal requirement to becoming a police officer. There were there were no need for formal education to becoming an officer. Almost anybody could become a police officer. So this was good to the extent that the policing was open to anyone, but this was bad because the policing was almost like not a profession rather than something people were doing just as a gig. Okay, It was not sort of well established where policing was done a particular way. Policing as a form of social control. Uh, when we talk about police as a form of social control, what that means is that in the early days, policing was much more like a family affair, uh, a private affair, where it was left to certain private entities to find a way to protect their, their loved ones, or their families, or their property and whatnot. So over time, it became much more, it became a much more generalized, uh, much more generalized affair. So police became a form Form of social control. In the early days of policing, what was uh, somewhat, somewhat common was the idea of having a night watchman. So that person was there to stand watch, as the name implies. But over time, policing become sort of organized or structured. It was not mi militarized to, uh, to that extent, but it became a form of governmental affair. Policing and corruption. Uh, because police officers were sort of mingled with the population, uh, they had the opportunities to sort of uh, be effective in, in what they do. Police officers were among the people they serve, so they were able to sort of address issues on the spot. Uh, and it was not so much a uh, calculated form of policing, rather it was so much an improvised form of policing. So as a result of that, police officers were sort of mingled with the population, which became a form of uh, a corruption. So police officers became susceptible to bribery and corruption, which was bad for the profession because over time, police officers were doing something other than protecting or serving. They were sort of you know, serving themselves, to put it this way. That's sort of what happened over time with police and corruption. Political influence on policing. Uh, it is hard to detach politics from policing. 
uh, again, if we're talking about policing as a form of governmental control or social control, then it is hard to dissociate or at least to detach the role of politics. So, so political influence on policing has been sort of there. It's been there since the beginning. Um, so there was considerable political influence on police officers. Uh, actions that police officers uh, took were often unprofessional. They were sort of, they were unethical. They were unlawful at times. So although politics still play uh, an important role in policing today, there are much more pressing and complicated influences that are worthy of note here. Uh, technological advances gave the police much more options in terms of how to fight crime. However, uh, changes in standards, development of ethical codes, education and training provided by those who are outside of policing itself, uh, and other indicators of professionalism are largely lacking. So uh, police officers are still sort of subject to certain influence that are not necessarily uh, beneficial for the profession as a whole. Reform in policing. It is worthy of note that there had been important changes in policing over the last day, over the last few years or so. Um, changes, many changes occurred uh, within the police profession. Uh, reform initiatives uh, have led to um, changes in the way police conduct themselves. Right, so certain behaviors that were overlooked now are deemed inappropriate. So police officers have certain ways they cannot behave. Uh, reformers have identified what we would know as inappropriate political involvement as a major problem in policing. So the use of uh, what is known as a civil service has helped reduce the role of politics in policing in general. So civil service has successfully removed some of the patronage in the police profession. It helped police officers stay away from politicians, uh, at least help police officers deal with influence of, of, of politics in the profession. Law and professionalism. Um, it is important to understand that the foundation of policing is based on, on the idea that policing is supposed to serve and protect. But the foundation of policing in general is uh, is not difficult to understand. So the, the foundation of the legitimacy of policing is not difficult to understand. So the concept of law and legal, I would say, professionalism were established as the basis for police legitimacy. So what that means is that police officers function within a particular parameter, and that parameter is the law. And as a result, police officers are professional. They are trained to perform a particular task, uh, and they have a specific duty, and that duty is sort of enshrined in the law. And as a result of that, policing is the affair of professionals. It is left to the discretion of professional executives. So policing became uh, a, a legal and a technical matter. So it is not the way it used to be in the past where anybody could be a police officer. So nowadays, there are certain uh, foundations, at least certain requirements to becoming a police officer. The need for politics in policing. Now, we could not completely detach politics from policing. Uh, the There's a certain uh, symbiotic relationship between the two. Um, eliminating political influence from policing is unlikely. Uh, now, we have to understand that policing in general is a civilian affair. Police officers are civilian entities. Although they obtain their authority, their power to sort of do and not do um, from the state, that they serve or they are associated with, but police officers or police entities are civilians in nature. What that means is that they are subject to the laws of the land. Police officers can be uh, can be prosecuted. Police officers can be arrested, can be thrown in jail if they are found to have violated the law. Although today it is almost impossible, but it is nevertheless a possibility. We, uh, for example, recently Derek Chauvin was found guilty for the crime of uh, 
of George Floyd. So it does happen once in a while where police officers uh, face the justice system in a way in a way that some of them may not have might not have expected. But yes, the the poli- there's a need for police uh, for politics in, in police because it would sort of it is necessary to the extent that it could help maintain the civilian control of the police. Social upheaval and policing. Policing is not immune from social upheavals. What that means is that the political movements or the social movements over the last few decades have had impacts on policing. They have sort of affected the way police operate. Uh, these events have sort of affected the degree to which uh, there is a connection between the police and the community they serve. And these events have also affected the way the public perceive the police within their community. So uh, social movements have in- impacted policing in a way that sort of been either good for society or bad for policing. Uh, or both. Series of failed policies. There have been numerous policing strategies uh, that have been implemented and tested over the years. Uh, The goal of these policies have generally been designed to satisfy the desire of certain segments of the population. Um, But this approach does not always um, yield results because oftentimes the police are seen as a certain uh, entity that sides with a certain segment of the population. So the other segment of the population, or the other segments of the population that sort of see the police as not their friends, rather as their enemies, tend to sort of resent the police, tend to see the police from a different perspective, from a different understanding. So this has had some negative impact in the relationship police have with their community. It has strained the police community relationship over the years. So it is important that certain policies must take into account the realities of the communities they serve. But this has not been the case over the years. Police mission. Now, we have talked about the fundamental mission of the police, which is to serve and protect. But there's also the understanding that the police are there to maintain order, to enforce the law, and to prevent crime. Uh, But over the last three decades or so, understandings about the role of police in society have been challenged. Uh, Challenged to the extent that even police themselves are not certain as to what role they should play in the society. So the police office, police entities have had to sort of reconsider their fundamental mission. They have sought to understand the nature of the, the core strategies that they use or they must use in the particular community they serve. So they have also had to understand the nature of the relationship that they enjoy or they have or the lack of with the, the community they serve. So this has impacted the mission of the police in, in many cases. Research and policing. There had been numerous innovative programs initiated in recent years. There had been an increase in research to evaluate how police can be more effective in their approach to policing. But the evidence uh, related to police performance and the implementation of certain policies um, uh, is, is limited. So the the, the effects of of, of strategies that the police have used to improve relationships with their community. Um, it doesn't, in other words, there's not a clear understanding as to how to do policing in a way that is effective. Organizational changes. Uh, policing has experienced organizational changes over the years. So many police agencies have sort of been reformed. Some have experienced a constant call uh, for change. These themes have been echoed by academicians, policymakers, and practitioners alike. So, but, but, but these efforts have not yielded positive results. So one reason for that is that policing is complex. You know, we've talked about the complex nature of the profession, but the issues that police entities face are 
complex. Societies are complex. Um, the realities of each police department can be very different. Uh, so there's not a one size fits all approach. There's no one has the solution. There's not a panacea to fixing all the ills of policing of society in general. So as a result of those organizational changes, we still police, police entities still face tremendous challenges, challenges which they have not been able to address over the years. A lack of proven strategies. As noted, uh, as noted before, there's a lack of proven strategies as to how to do policing in a way that is effective. Uh, changes in police strategies have not been sort of determined, uh, in, in, by rigorous settings. So it's like, it's almost like improvising the policing, uh, itself. Uh, it is not necessarily based on some tangible ways of doing policing. Some of the strategies have that I've used uh, or include the idea that policing should be community oriented. There's also the understanding that policing should be a problem oriented. Both e these approaches have not really been, you know, have not really yielded positive results. They have, for the most part, been a, a response to global issues that affect police local police departments. In other words, the way policing have sort of been tailored uh, has not been reflective of the reality of local police entities, of local police departments. And this have this have this is not good for policing in general. Policing faces many challenges. Uh, now on the one hand there's a need for policing in society. But on the other hand, there's also the idea that police should not go too far. Well, in day, in today's society, the need for policing is greater than ever. Uh, the increasing complexity of policing coupled with the technological base of the world itself uh, makes policing an important element in society. Um, it requires a cooperation with the citizenry. It requires vigilant, uh, vigilance on the part of police entities. It requires a form of proactive policing. This is the best way to effectively address a wide variety of issues, not only in policing, but also in society as a whole. See you in the next chapter.